Hi, welcome to JLVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. I want to do a review on this little helicopter. Now this is a Twister Storm and I'm just going to give you my opinions on it and some what I think are handy tips. So this is like a 400, 450 size, that sort of size helicopter, so it's quite small. But, and generally, the smaller the helicopter, the harder they are to fly. But these are a nice size. They're, they're fairly inexpensive. They're portable, they're practical. Not too difficult to set up. And um, I think they're a good way to learn, as long as you're careful with them. And this is what I call proper flying. There's no stabilization built in. Um, this doesn't help you in any way. This is what I call old school learning to fly. This is a fly bar helicopter. It's not like the new fly barless ones which have all the gyros built in. All this has is a, a towel gyro, which, you know, compared to what I had to learn on, even that's a step up because you didn't have a, a towel gyro that locked solid and you didn't have to do anything about it. You, you know, you had to work it. So for me, if you're looking to learn to fly helicopters, what I call, I don't want to say properly, but properly, the old school way, rather than to rely on all these you know gizmos and gadgets then i think this is a great way to learn and this coupled with perhaps a flight simulator i think is a great way now i learned to fly helicopters on uh, mostly uh, nitro powered ones and i flew shuttles um, space barons I had, uh, what else did I have? Oh, a couple of, oh, Raptors, a couple of Raptors. And then moved up into the really big XL90, you know, massive things, which were absolutely gorgeous to fly, but a ton of money flying around. And to be honest, they used to scare me silly, though, the, you know, the really big stuff. Um, just because of the amount of money you've got up there. All through my training, I can hand on heart say, or hand on microphone, sorry, say, I never once crashed a helicopter. I had a, an engine failure at a reasonable altitude and did an auto rotation and broke a skid. Other than that, I've never crashed a heli. So these people that say you have to crash to learn, um, it, it, I think it's wrong. I mean, I can fly um, circuits, nose in, figures of eight. I can do loops, rolls. I can do stationary flips and I'm just starting to learn inverted. So I can flip it inverted and hold it there for a little while, move it around, then flip back. And I'm, I'm sort of just, I'm improving at that all the time. And I'm learning that on the, the combination of the simulator and the, the heli. So anyway, more about the, the heli. And so this is the Twister Storm. You can pick these up fairly cheap. They're only about 150, 60 quid brand new. The, the things that I've done to it, the modifications, first is that I've put a different canopy on, just a cheap old one that I've put on there because when you buy these helis, because they're already made, they all look the same. So I just wanted it to look different and I didn't like the canopy that came with it. So I've just put that canopy on it. So that's the first modification. Now, you can buy metal swash plates you can change all this to metal and all anodized aluminium you can change all this to anodized aluminium and there's loads of upgrades that you can get for these and you can convert them to carbon fiber and just basically you end up building a whole new helicopter now my advice would be be very careful in what you upgrade and upgrade the things that give you the most benefit for the least amount of hassle and cost now, I've had helicopters with all metal heads. I've had a, a, a prime example is a T-Rex 500, absolutely stunning helicopter, ridiculously powerful, running on six cells. And, uh, but when you get a completely all metal head and everything's metal, you get vibration problems. And it's, it, with plastic, you get an inbuilt level of dampening and it's just a little bit easier to set up. There's a little bit of giving it, so you don't have to be absolutely spot on on your setup. In a crash, if you break something that's plastic, it's cheaper to repair. So rather than strip all this off and put all metal on for a very small gain in performance, then you know if you're fairly happy with what it's doing, just change the things you need to change. Now, the first thing I changed on this was the servo for the, the tail. 
Now I haven't changed anything on the tail, this is purely stock, apart from I've also put these little sort of carbon blades on, which is more for effect than anything, to be honest, um, and I just like the look of them. But other than that, you know, they're, they're only cheapy little blades, that's not a major thing, that's just a, you know, as I say, I think they were slightly smaller than the other ones, but anyway, they, um, they really haven't changed it. But this is all stock, this is all plastic, and I've never had a problem with it, and it all runs quite smoothly, and a lot of people say, the, especially the towel rotor grips, you're better off with this plastic than metal anyway, um, because of some of the issues that you can get with um, with the plastic. Um, sorry, I'm just, the sun's just come out, so the video's gone bright. Just bear with me. The the thing I did notice was that the towel authority wasn't great with the the servos that came with it, which were just standard little um, JP ones. It was all right, but I don't know. It, I just it didn't feel comfortable the towel, and it wasn't holding particularly well. So I've just put a little high-tech HS65HB, not an expensive servo, just a nice little servo, nicely made. You've got a carbon rod which goes to the towel so it's nice and secure uh, and that's a really nice upgrade, works absolutely beautifully. The only other thing I've not necessarily upgraded but changed, because the blades that come with this to be honest were okay, is I've put these, uh, these are carbon fibre HT blades, and they're like a composite. They weren't the, quite the right thickness, so I've got spacers in here. But the main reason I put these blades on was because they're yellow and they're easier to see. Yeah, the main reason for the blades was because they're yellow and red, they show up better, and I find you can see the disc better when it's flying. And the blades I chose had a slightly wider cord on them, which almost, I don't know, it's difficult to explain, but it almost softens the feel of the helicopter just a little bit. And once I'd got them tracked nicely and running nice, it seemed to quieten the helicopter down a little bit and it didn't sound so frantic. Um, it actually sounds really nice now. Other than that, it's stock. It's got the stock motor, which is plenty powerful enough. The uh, boom is stock. I've got, I've still got the original belt in there, um, which is okay. There is evidence that the belt is wearing a little bit, and you can see there's a little bit of pickup on the the little um, the idle gear at the back here. This little bearing, there's little bits of black coming off on that. So you just need to keep an eye on that on the tail belt. But they're pretty tough, and. Uh, I don't think it's a problem at the moment, to be fair. I've got this running on a Spectrum 2.4 gig. And um, I just want to talk about the settings briefly. Very simple. Um, just have a very standard pitch. I mean, when I first started flying, I had a, a what's called a Futaba 9 Zap. And some of you will know what that is, some of you won't. And it had a 13 point pitch and throttle curve. And if you think you have 13 point pitch and throttle curve and then 13 points for each of your idle up, one, two, normal, absolute nightmare. These modern transmitters usually have about five points and to be honest, it's absolutely um, fine. You you know, I really don't need any more than that. So I'm just gonna go in and tell you roughly what my settings are. I always have um, about 20, 30% exponential built in because it just softens around the center and it makes hovering nice and smooth. Um, I'm just gonna go into pitch curve. Yeah, very standard. Just starting off in normal mode. It starts off at about 14%, then goes to, oh sorry, 20%. 30%, 43, 62, and then 88 as the pitch curve. So that's nice and soft in normal mode, just for hovering about, and that's lovely and smooth. If we then go into, then the other pitch curves just go from, in a diagonal from zero to 100, on both um, idle up one and two, or this is called ST one and two, stunt mode, I think they call it now, not idle up. So it's stunt mode one and two. And then the throttle curve in stunt mode, in, in normal mode, it's just like almost a straight, but just a slight dip on it. And then in stunt mode, I go from 100 to 80 to 100, and then 100 to 86 to 100 in idle up two, and that, that works absolutely fine. Um, so very, very simple to set up. And you know, if you're just learning, I would say you don't need to put the stunt modes in, but it's nice just to put it in and try it because when you first flick into 
stunt mode you get an increase in head speed obviously and for some people it can be quite nerve wracking so it's best just to get used to the noise change and the way the helicopter responds and becomes a little bit more taut um, and you know so I, I would always suggest perhaps try it just briefly before you go off and go mad yeah when you set the helicopter up before you go out I'm just going to plug a battery in to it here and hope it doesn't fly off there's no reason why it should just wait for it to initialize you get all the noises and things um, let's just see if I've got throttle hold programmed in yes I have okay so I've got throttle hold on so uh, basically everything will work apart from the throttle and um, when you're going to set up a helicopter just look at your swash plate and you want everything level so my servos in like the the mid position are sort of at 90 degrees the, the servo arms are at 90 degrees to the servos in sort of the mid position the swash plate is nice and level and then if you look at the swash plate when you're setting it up if I turn um, if I do cyclic to the right or aileron if you like to call it to the right you'll see the swash plate will dip to the right if you go left the swash plate will dip to the left try not to look at the blades because depending on where they are will depend on what they do just look at the swash plate and then if everything else is connected the blades should be doing the right thing so um, swash plate left and right goes left and right forwards and back it will dip forward and come back and if you start it off within everything sort of set in the middle and everything's flat and all aligned, you're gonna give yourself a much better chance of success than if perhaps you start off and your swatch plate is, you know, you can see it's dipping forward or something's changing. Um, the other thing to look out for is as you increase the throttle or decrease the throttle, it changes the pitch of the blades from positive to negative. Now, when you do that, you just want to look at all your servos that are working. Now, here we have one servo there, one servo there, so that's two. And then one servo here. So we've got three servos all working together. And what you want to make sure, especially with these cheaper servos, is that they're all working at the same speed and the same distance travel. So as you're going up and down, they're all going up and down together in a nice smooth motion. There's no binding and everything looks good you can turn the blades around still all nice because i have had issues with these where one of the servos goes did it or has a little jitter or one's not quite as powerful as another or perhaps if someone swapped a different servo in uh, one slightly moving at a different speed because if they move at different speeds and they're not matched it will give you some other change as you throttle up. It, it will go left, right, up, down, whatever, and could cause a crash. So there you go. Um, if you've got a heading hold gyro, which these do, always use them in heading hold because it's just easier. You, you know, it's, there's no real need to go out of that. If you're into smooth scale flying, you might want to come out of heading hold. But to be honest. I can fly it smoothly with, with heading holding anyway. You just have to do a little bit more on the rudder, um, so that's fine. Other things to look out for in uh, electric helis are evidence of uh, plastic anywhere, like plastic filings or little bits of plastic that are perhaps come from the gears. If they're not quite meshing properly with the motor or the tail drive, you might have um, an issue. So if you see little flecks of plastic on the skids or showing up anywhere, um, you're gonna need to strip it down because you've got a gear meshing issue. And, um, and that's about it for these really. They're nice and neat, as I say, nice and simple, cheap to repair. And um, what I'll do now is, um, if I get a moment, I'll go out and do just a little bit of flying, nothing major, just um, hovering around so you can just listen to it and, um, and see it flying. And um, that's it really. This, is, um, this has been GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions with my quick review on the, uh, the Twister Storm electric helicopter. Cheers, bye.